Hi everybody, this is Noelle from Petite Garden Centers, and we are actually doing a three-part series, and this is our third part to this series, or final part to this series. It is growing house plants, the ones you love. If you love this, try this. And so today we're kind of at that advanced level of house plants, and I know as you're looking right next to me here, we have Calathea or Calathea, however you like to say it. And then we also have Alocasia. And um, for those of you that have tried Calathea with mm, okay success, or maybe you absolutely love them, they are a little bit tougher to grow. So we're gonna talk about the conditions that they prefer and how it's nice to kind of take that, those care um, details and kind of move them into using the alocasia, um, on the alocasia or around the alocasia. So um, first of all, with Calathea or Calathea, their foliage colors and texture are unbeatable. I mean, they are just so fantastic and there's so many different varieties. I think all of us try them at one point, say, okay, we're gonna try it. Sometimes don't realize that they can be a little bit um, higher or more advanced care level and that's okay. Um, to start out with, they are native to South America tropics. So um, they really do, they're an understory plant. They do like shadier areas. Um, so indoors, we always recommend growing them indoors and it's usually medium indirect lighting. You can put them in lower lighting. They might lose or fade some of their color. You can put them in brighter indirect lighting. Again, no direct sunlight. You will notice burning very quickly on their foliage. And of course that doesn't make them very attractive. So uh, make sure that you realize that. It's very similar with alocasia as well, the elephant ears. If they are grown as a house plant, you again want to provide them with that sort of medium to bright indirect lighting. They really, if they're not watered a lot or not growing in moist, evenly moist soil, they can also burn. So just be aware of that um, when you're growing them. And of course, these can be grown outdoors in more sun. I would probably go to like the part shade type of lighting with them. But again, they have to have consistent soil moisture to be able to kind of um, be able to handle that type of direct sunlight. So uh, do be aware of that. The other thing, and I think this is probably uh, the most difficult with Calathea is that watering, um, depending on which water system you're on, and some of us have hard water, some of us have, you know, more fluoride or what have you, um, tap water can be a little bit rough on them. So when you water with tap water, what we always recommend is you go ahead and fill up your watering can and let it sit out overnight at room temperature. And then hopefully you get a little bit of dissipation with the gases and things that we add to our water and then water with it. What happens sometimes is you'll start to see dark edges develop on them. And it really has to do with all those different chemicals that we do put in water for our health, but obviously not the plant health. So lots of times we recommend just using distilled water. So grab a gallon of distilled water. You can use um, rain barrel water as well and water them with that versus the tap water and see if it kind of clears up those dry edges or spottiness that you find on the leaves sometimes. Now, that's not the case with alocasia, just so you know. It's not necessarily the water quality, but again, as I mentioned before, they're a bulb. And so when you're growing them indoors as a house plant, you don't have to water them as often. In fact, you want to make sure that they are on the drier side of the of watering in their pots because um, that bulb again can get very wet and rot. Um, so that's why you want to take uh, care when you're watering and again, let them go a little bit dry, about an inch or two deep at the top of the soil, feel down in there, and then make sure that if they are dry to about one to two inches, then go ahead and thoroughly moisten. So we always talk about thorough watering with a house plant is going to be that pot 
thoroughly watering, moistening all the soil, letting the water drip out the bottom, finish dripping, and then go ahead and reapply water, thoroughly moistening the soil and let it drip out the bottom again, and then place it back where you're growing it, okay? Don't let the plant sit in water. That's always a bad situation that can cause root rot. Then the next thing you know, you think the plant's wilting because it's dry. It's actually wilting because those roots are um, now decomposing and they're not able to absorb water, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, with the other plants, I think um, really, and, and fertilizer here with, with um, house plants again, it can just be a multi-purpose fertilizer, usually at half strength to quarter strength. You can use house plant fertilizers. Just read the package directions before you apply so you know what you're dealing with and, and formulations. There's so many different formulations out there, organic, man-made, what have you, that any that you decide to use are great, just don't overfeed and always follow the instructions, okay? Um, let's talk about varieties. So I mentioned Stromanthe, this is Triostar, really beautiful pink and green variegated foliage. In that Calathea family again, um, looks very, very similar with those deep um, kind of purple pink back undersides of their leaves here. This one's Shining Star, it's a beautiful rounded leaf um, gorgeous variegation, kind of like peacock calathea, if you've heard of that before. So that's this variety, a little bit larger uh, foliage here. This is Makoyana, uh, beautiful, smaller leaf variety. And I should mention that these are great in bathrooms. Um, both of them can grow very well in bathrooms because they like the high humidity. And I'll, I'll show you here uh, the mister because I totally forgot to mention it. We were talking about watering, but they really enjoy a nice misting um, and keeping that humidity really, really high around these plants is always great. So those bathroom conditions, as long as you have good indirect lighting or even the kitchen as well, um, where you end up having a little bit higher humidity levels in the kitchen. Um, as we move, sorry, this is a little Calathea too. This is Zabrina, so beautiful striped foliage here. Um, lovely dark green color. And I love how the Calathea or Calathea kind of unfurl. They unroll uh, their foliage as they come out. So it's so pretty. It shows the undersides of the leaves so well. Now with the Alocasia, um, also known as elephant ear or taro. Uh, again, this one's kind of a, a really new designer one. This is a, a really dark, almost black leaf, very, very dark purple. Um, so this one is gonna be uh, fantastic. And again, kind of shorter on the shorter side. And this one's, uh-oh, I lost it, Taylor. We're gonna have to put the name in there for you because it's so new, I totally forgot. Oh, Infernalis, got it. So the next one right next to it is a pretty common one. This is Frydeck. She's really pretty, kind of medium sized, um, but not too big, not the, the huge giant alocasia or elephant ears that you find out there. Beautiful white uh, vein through that leaf. We have Polly, and this is also known as African mask. But again, I think it's, it's interesting that they get all different common names. So again, try to um, you know find out your real botanical names on some of these because they don't come from Africa at all. They're, they come from Asia, really, most of your um, alocasias. And then this beautiful modeled one is called Hilo Beauty. Um, a little bit larger. Sometimes you'll see these growing outdoors again, outdoor planters, kind of shady, partial shade. And these can get a little bit bigger um, outdoors, closer to that four foot mark. So just depending on where you grow them. Um, just keep in mind, again, this is kind of advanced level. If you love your Calathea, try the Alocasias. But again, there's a little bit more care and maintenance, I should say, higher care and maintenance for these to be successful. But um, once you are successful with one of these plants, oh my gosh, it's so rewarding and they're so beautiful. Enjoy.